everyone. I'd like to thank uh, SCAA and the symposium director for giving me the opportunity to bring you an update on what has been done, we as an industry, over the last 12 months to tackle the coffee lepros crisis. And I'd like to get started with a video. The specialty coffee industry is well aware of the devastating impact Roya, the coffee leaf rust disease, has had in coffee growing regions. In the past 18 months, the damage has been unprecedented. Coffee harvests in Mexico, Central America, and parts of South America have fallen between 15 and 40 percent for the current harvest season. Unfortunately, there is no one solution to Roya. The most common approach to fight this parasitic fungus is with chemical fungicide. But deciding which mixture is most effective raises many questions, and identifying solutions that won't threaten organic certification is even more difficult. Roya was first seen in the mid-19th century, and some coffee-producing countries, including Colombia and Brazil, came up with effective ways to fight it. La historia de la roya en Colombia es desde los años 70. En 1970, cuando la roya llega a Brasil, todavía no estaba aquí. En esa época eran experiencias muy desastrosas en los países donde ella había aparecido. La roya llegó a Colombia en el año 83 y ya nosotros habíamos liberado la primera variedad resistente. The Castillo variety has effectively resisted Roya in the mountains of Colombia, but it is not yet proven suitable for planting in other Latin American coffee lands, although tests are underway to find varieties that will work. Farmers and specialty roasters are hesitant to switch from heirloom to Roya-resistant varietals until there's more information about the impact on cup quality. As for treating Roya, with organic coffee producers unable to use chemical fungicides, there's an urgency and high interest in other organic solutions. Yo llamé a mi hermano y le digo, hermano, le digo yo, tenés problemas con Roya. Y aquí ese problema, yo me preocupé porque se iba a pasar para acá. Entonces le digo, hay que fumigar. Entonces, pero yo tengo un obstáculo por delante que no puedo usar ningún producto químico. Yo no puedo hacer eso, entonces yo voy a tener que buscar una forma de, de controlar la roya. Empecé a, a probar con varios productos diferentes. También en un barril de 50 galones hice un producto con frutas. Eh, penca de mozote, una planta que es pegajosa, que despide una liga. Entonces... Vi que el producto, después de haberlo aplicado a los dos días, de haber aplicado el producto, empezaba a ver que empezaron a salir hojas nuevas, brotes nuevos de la finca. Y el resultado es que al final la finca, esta finca se salvó de la roya y todas las demás fincas tuvieron problemas serios que botaron la hoja. No se puede madurar el café, todavía lo tienen las fincas. El café no se puede madurar. The compromised quality and drastically diminished volumes in Latin America will impact the entire specialty coffee industry this year and for years to come. In response, the industry has come together in recent months at several meetings, including the sustainable harvest-led Let's Talk Roya event in El Salvador last November. Everyone's also aware that it's more than just an agricultural disease to be dealt with. It's a crisis affecting the lives of coffee growers, their families, and scores of others in rural communities. Many of these people have been going hungry, and the Roya crisis only worsens an already precarious food security situation. Our industry response to the Roya crisis can provide valuable insights about how we might deal with a wide range of diseases and other challenges resulting from climate change well into the future. Working together to find solutions also helps empower farmers to make good long-term decisions, which should work to the benefit of everyone committed to specialty coffee. So we're going to start by acknowledging and thanking our partners from Prome Cafe and the World Coffee Research that have led this industry 
joint effort coordinating the actions of over 20 different institutions that are working internationally to combat Roja. Very important, Prome Cafe has created an action plan with the specific tasks to be implemented throughout the region with its seven partner institutions in Central America. This action plan was very comprehensive, and I'm here to deliver today an update on what has been done in these three different dimensions. There's a handful of information, and hopefully we're going to deliver it the best way possible. The first measure on the coffee rust integrated management that took place was the, feed, the implementation of the phytosanitary plant in an attempt to stop Roja affecting and spreading throughout the region. Thanks to OIRSA, producers were able to access finance for fungicides and equipment that allowed them to put this stop to the crisis. Then, Promecafe created manuals for producers and technicians to use so they could assess and control different measures to, uh, to control Roja. Additionally, other private institutions like Sustainable Harvest created manuals for producers to receive training in a written form with lo using local elements and recipes that could be easily implemented by any of them. You have a copy of the handbook in your goodie bag, and you'll see that it's a comprehensive guide how to, like, understand better Roja, how can I deal with Roja, and I think like many other coffee growers know, it's about how to live with Roja, because it's a constant reality that we all face daily. Very important key element in this action plan was the regional communication program. It included radio ad campaigns that were aired throughout the region to raise awareness about the presence and the effects of Roja in areas that were not historically affected by the disease. Very important as well. As you can listen, they actually were introduced in a very easy way, very friendly way, just to let people know what was going on. Like they were not used to it. They, it took them by surprise. So just raising awareness that Roja was a reality among certain communities was a very important factor. Also, the podcast series that was created by Prome Cafe used to uh, became a very important tool for producers to download on their smartphones, iPads, and just to use, to use it and listen to it as necessary. One very important multimedia tool that was also created is the Roger Recovery Toolkit video, where producers provided advice and counsel to other producers in a peer-to-peer -peer kind of training, so they could just, again, manage and use these type of simple recipes to try to attack Roja. Five fully dedicated websites were established throughout the last 12 months. Those were hubs of information where anyone could come 24-7 and receive just further information on what was happening, how can I manage this reality, and what can I do to move forward. The communication campaigns also took the form of printed materials, and they were broadly distributed throughout the region in the form of periodic bulletins, magazines, and posters that were just placed in different purchase points or just like in the communities. As Rick just mentioned, the first big step that we took as an industry was the first international coffee rust summit that took place two weeks after the symposium last year, and that's where over 300 stakeholders came, acknowledged the reality, and found ways to move forward. One of, along with that event, other nine international events and seven domestic events took place to implement the plan and to coordinate actions. This one in particular, it's a beautiful example of how one event that was originally intended for the Dominican Republic then became a uh, international event with the collaboration of Haiti to fight Roja in the island. The Lester Roja Honduras event took place in June 2013. Over there, we had the presence of over 75 technicos, agronomists, and coppers 
to actually assess the first impacts of this crisis throughout the region. More so, we hosted the Let's Talk Coffee Global along with the Let's Talk Roger event that was as attended by over 300 different actors of the coffee value chain that came together to keep thinking, to work, keep working about solutions for these producers throughout Mesoamerica. One important event that was also uh, hosted was the 20th Specialized Forum on Climate Change. And for the first time ever, the, establi the establishment of a coffee round table to actually discuss properly the matters of climate change and coffee production as a whole. Uh, another great initiative was the one funded by USAID and its partners through the Programa Agroalimentario Sostenible that provided access to technologies and good agricultural practice for improved sustainable agriculture. The early warning system that has been designed and will be implemented by the national institutions has been one of the main outcomes of this Roja crisis because we're preparing for the future. This early warning system has established a common set of protocols and standards to monitor Roja and other climate change related disease, as well as other potential crises and their economic and social impacts. On the genetic improvement end, the most important effort that is being led by the World Coffee Research is the first international multi-location varietal trial, with the main objective of increased production and, sorry, widespread and increased production, as well as quality improvements of the best identified varieties in certain regions and then their dissemination across different coffee producing communities. This case study, run by Sustainable Harvest, provided us further impact, further uh, insight on the impact of the roya in the cup quality. We were able to see and understand the major taints and defaults that were present in uh, coffees that have been affected by roya. So, before jumping into the social dimension of this response, I would like to bring back the conversation that we had here at Symposium two years ago. Throughout the world, over 25 million people earn their living by growing coffee. The vast majority of these farmers are paid only once a year after they have delivered their coffee. For the rest of the year, farmers and their families are often forced to stretch their money and their food supply until the next year's harvest. The result is seasonal hunger, an experience so common that from Mexico to South America, it has its own name, Los Meses Flacos, the Thin Months. So Oxfam, Save the Children, the FAO and the World Food Program conducted four different studies in Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, and Nicaragua to assess the socioeconomic impact of this ongoing crisis. One of the most important findings was that the increased percentage that smallholder households were investing in food as a total percentage of their income. More so, and the most shocking fact was the expansion of the thin months, passing from four months of seasonal hunger to a period of nine months. Therefore, something that we used to know as seasonal seems now to be becoming chronic. As a result, the World Food Program is aiming to channel over $25 million in help at, in the matter of, uh, in the way of food, and good agricultural practices training to over 130,000 families that are starving in Central America. On the economic dimension of the response, the most important activity to highlight is the Coffee Farmers Resilience Initiative, a public-private partnership that has gathered over $7 million and it then was announced publicly in November at Lestock Roja. 
this partnership will allow Root Capital to lend over $10 million to 50 producer organizations throughout Latin America, representing over 200,000 coffee growers. This initiative will go beyond that and will provide short-term and long-term credits, as well as financial uh, management trainings and diversification strategies for those families and communities. I think it's pretty clear for all of us that we're here not talking about a fungus. We're talking about 1.9 million families that depend on coffee and are going hungry as we speak. We're talking about the children of coffee that lack opportunities, that lack access to food and education because they cannot have a decent living through coffee production. I think regardless your role in the value chain, regardless the size of your company, we can all take action and we must act right now. Thank you very much.